personally, like what what is it about IBM licensing that kind of grabbed you and that you wanted to, you know, be a, a specialist and a guru in? Um, I was a job change back in uh, 2005, I think, when I got a job at KPMG and became an IBM auditor. Realized I was good at it, did, you know, IBM audits, sort of UK, some in Europe, then moved to Australia, did them across Australia and New Zealand. And since then, it's just pretty much always been a part of my life, whether uh, both in my internal roles or here as a consultant. Um, it's also my other speciality is audit defense. As an ex-auditor, I had spent five years in investment banks, you know, dealing with audits. And um, when I came to Livingston a long time ago now, you know, it just made sense for me to pick up audit defense engagements. And IBM are, are one of the most consistent auditors. Their program is largely unchanged since it first started in 2003. It's still the same two auditors doing the program. The approach is still broadly the same. Technology difference is based on technology change and all the rest of it. But it's, it's, it's you know, it's been a fairly consistent program. So, you know, from my point of view, it's just I've, I sort of fell into it. I got good at it. I like doing it. Um, I've got a you know pretty good relationship with my customers around IBM vendors as well. So Quest, Microfocus. I've done some open text. I've done you know a lot of audit defense across a lot of vendors as well as helping our customers internally. So do you know some of the conversion rates um, for for license management and metrics off by heart? Probably yes. yeah. I was gonna, there must be some. You must have done it so many times now. By default, you know what the yeah. Well, well. So cloud pack for integration is probably the one we deal with the most. Um, you know, there's a fair bit there. The more bizarre ones just stick in my head instantly. So you want to license data stage through a cloud pack that's licensed in a virtual processor core metric. You still need to count PVUs. That, that's a, that's sort of a bit of a weird change because 70 PVUs equals one VPC, but that means that if a customer has got a a core that's worth 100 or 120 PVUs, they need more than one VPC to cover a one virtual processor core. Um, you know, so it's sort of just a bit odd. The whole rate bunch of conversions from users to cloud users yeah. to VPCs, like I talked about earlier, gigabits per second to virtual processor cores. It's it's cleaner than the old flex points used to be that they played with for a while, but it's still a bit of a mess. What I like about um, people like yourselves that are, you know, licensing gurus for a particular vendor or, or particular kind of similar vendors in that space is the one thing that they always come back to me is, as to why they enjoy it so much is they're problem solvers. Yeah. You know, they, they yeah. love a challenge. They love, I mean, so I think, I can't remember who I was talking to, but I think it was more around the Microsoft space. And he actually said, look, the more complicated it is, the more excited I get because it's a problem that I need to try oh, yeah. and solve. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, um when I get the time, there's nothing I like better than just sitting down and building conversion spreadsheets. Um, but, uh, <laughs> nice. but to be fair, I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd. I, I, um, I, I was saying to my, one of my customers the other day, I am, um, you know, I love audits. I love doing, uh, do, doing, working in audits. Some of them are really, really smooth. Some of them, I, you know, I work well with a lot of orders. Some of them are more aggressive and uh, <laughs> some of the orders are a bit more aggressive and then re relationships are a bit more fractious but good good and bad relationship with orders throughout the years but I, I really like the challenge of audits um and i also love reading contracts it's just a bit of a nerdy side of me so it's a bit of a weird one um where no, you, know, you, 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 you find an, an unusual audit clause when you're reading contracts and you go oh that's interesting and add it to a little library of unusual audit clauses <laughs> are you still so. finding stuff even today yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, we do. So whenever we take on a new customer, we go through quite a lot of their contracts. Now, I don't do a lot of don't do a huge amount of that stuff myself, but um, I still get involved occasionally when there's sort of complex contracts or whatever else. You know, IBM, Microsoft, the big vendors, not so much, but certainly in some of the more obscure vendors you do. We do find quite a lot of con um, audit clauses. The joy of contract reading for me is when I find a reverse audit clause, but not that I've ever had a customer use one, but uh, when I when you find an order clause that says a customer can audit the supplier, um, it's it's sort of a bit of a, 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 a nice one to find. But it, it, I don't think I've ever seen a customer audit a supplier for record keeping on round this. But anyway, imagine, yeah, imagine if that actually happened. 